In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and life, as we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Please stand and we'll acclaim the gospel in song. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them until the end. The devil had already induced G Judas son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and he took off his outer garments. He took a towel and he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and he began to wash his disciples' feet and to dry them with the towel around his waist. When he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. And Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. And for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet, he put his garments back on and he reclined at table again. And he said to them, do you realize what I have just done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and the teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord.
every day. You and I sacrifice our time and our resources, and on some days, our very lives for the people in front of us. They are the members of our family, our husbands and our wives and our children, and maybe even our extended family. They are our friends. They might be our neighbors. They might be somebody you meet along the way who seems strange to you and because you stop and you ask what they need, all of a sudden you become acquainted and you help them out. Every day, you and I sacrifice ourselves for the sake of the people in front of us. And the reason we do that is simply because we love them. We love them. Think about it. People will say to you, why do you do that? Why are you giving all this time? Why are you giving all this money? Why are you doing what you're doing? And we respond, it's a labor of love. The motivation of the reasons why we sacrifice ourselves is simply because we love the people in front of us. Sometimes it gets muddied and it gets clouded because we dismiss those simple actions of hospitality that we show to others because we love them. And we will dismiss it by saying it's not that big of a deal. And maybe at the moment, it might not be for you. And it even might not be for the people who receive the sacrifices you make for them because you love them. But never underestimate that every moment of our lives, we're called to make a choice to be present to the people who are in front of us and to respond in some particular way with all that we have, with who we are, and with what we have been given. And there are days that we don't always rise to the occasion. But more times than not, we do. And when we do, what we should stand back and think about is what God has done for us in giving us his son, Jesus Christ, who has modeled a certain behavior for all who believe in him. And he simply said, do this in memory of me. He didn't say how to do it. He just said that when you sacrifice yourself for the sake of others, do it in memory of me. And more times than not, we succeed at doing it in memory of him. We come here today to celebrate an event where Jesus not only set a powerful example for how his disciples were called to live with the people in front of them as they went about serving them in Jesus' name. We also celebrate the fact that he has given us the kind of nourishment we need to be able to do that well. He feeds us with his holy word. He strengthens us with his body and his blood. And as we are nourished by word and sacrament, the expectation, the baptismal responsibility, the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ is, is that when we go back out and begin to live with the people in front of us, we will always keep our eyes open and always generate within our own hearts a desire to be of service to all, motivated by love. It's a big deal. And the reason it's a big deal 
is because that's what this world needs to see. Not just today, not just tomorrow, but it's always needed to see that. And if you pay attention to our sacred history, you will see and you will remember and you will hear about people who to this day are remembered in our midst who have done just that. They've sacrificed themselves for the sake of others and they've done it because they know first that they are deeply loved by God who does it for each of us every day of our life. And they try to emulate that example, not only of the God of the Old Testament, but of his son, Jesus Christ, who came to confirm God's love in our hearts and hoped we would put it into practice by the way in which we live with each other day in and day out. That's why we gather to first celebrate the love that he shares with us unconditionally, without reservation, the enormous mercy that he continues to extend into our hearts so that we can feel his presence and his love most keenly. And then motivated by that, to simply do it for one another. That's the challenge. That's why we're here. That's why we gather always and everywhere in a place like this to be so motivated once again to go out into the world and give what we've received. And hopefully, because he has done it for us, we will never forget it. And we're so moved by what he does for us that we never forget it. And that wherever we find ourselves, we will do it for each other, especially those who need it the most. And when we do it for each other, we will hear those words echoing in the back of our heads when we give ourselves in that particular way. Do this in memory of me. We'll stand and we'll pray. May all Christians grow in faith and unity as we give witness to the love of our one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, all clergy, and the Church throughout the world, may the Eucharist nourish us for, for lives of discipleship and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, for all who serve and protect our country and for lasting peace in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here, may we give ourselves in humble service to our neighbors, especially those who come to our door in times of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the sick find comfort, and may those who have died find lasting joy at the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask that you receive our prayers and bless us along our way, so that as we journey ever closer to your kingdom, we might always do so knowing that you are with us through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll be seated now as we make preparation for the Eucharist. Jesus. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, an acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make us holy so that the human race bounded, bound by one world may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, as we pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. With all of creation, we cry out, and without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning you are constantly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out for them the power of your Holy Spirit. They may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your sons and your daughters. When we were lost and could not find our way back to you, you loved us more than ever. Jesus, your Son, innocent and without sin, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to a cross. Yet before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth in an everlasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate a last supper in the company of his friends. While they were at supper, he took bread and said a blessing. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things to himself through the blood of his cross, he poured a final chalice of wine. He gave the chalice to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. we celebrate the memorial of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and lasting peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection. We look forward to his second coming. We offer you, our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. 
Look kindly on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may partake of this one bread and one chalice, and we may be gathered into the one body of Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Archbishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until that hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints, in the halls of heaven. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, St. Olaf, and all the saints, along with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your love and mercy. Then, when we are freed from the wounds of corruption, we will be made fully into a new creation, and we shall sing to you with great gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your love and mercy, may we always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand and let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so may we enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.